Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for September 25th, 2022, current on 1140 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including Tropical Storm Ian now approaching Cuba. We have a hurricane warning in effect, and is Florida in danger? So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that we have Tropical Storm Ian now south and west of Jamaica at this point. This is becoming an increasing, likely major hurricane threat for portions of Cuba over the next couple of days and perhaps even Florida. And we have a few other systems out here in the tropical Atlantic, none of which are impacting land at the moment. If you look here at the zoomed in visible satellite imagery for Tropical Storm Ian today, we notice that the surface cyclone and rotation has become a lot better organized today. And in fact, we are actually now dealing with a low level circulation. You can see it very clearly in here that is very tight and is able to generate thunderstorm activity on its own. However, we notice that the thunderstorm activity is significantly lacking in this area. And we noticed that only within recent hours have we had a little bit of a blow up of convection over top of this surface cyclone. Now, one of the likely reasons if we jump out here and look at the water vapor satellite imagery, uh, there might actually be some hints of some mid-level dry air that is over here. This would be associated with that upper level ridging uh, that we were talking about over the past few days. And because, again, this is a broad area of circulation, this dry air is getting ingested a little bit uh, into our cyclone today and is having a little bit of a hard time generating the thunderstorm activity, uh, but it should be able to pick up in earnest pretty quick. If we look at the recon plane that was in there from earlier, we noticed that the pressures were consistent around 1,003 to 1,004 millibars. And there was some tropical storm force winds, especially on the northeastern side, but all of the southerly winds here on the, on the southern side of the circulation were very weak. So there's very weak westernlies at this point on the southern side of the circulation, which means that this still has a while to go until it is fully aligned and able to intensify significantly. Now, looking at the overall track forecast for Ian, again, right now, this has sustained winds of 50 miles per hour, give or take. Uh, we do now have a hurricane warning that has been issued for portions of the western tip of Cuba. There's still a little bit of uncertainty as to if this crosses right over the western tip or whether this stays offshore, and that will matter going forward. Uh, but irregardless, this is expected to bring hurricane conditions to portions of the western tip of Cuba, especially being on the eastern side. This is bad for that area. Um, and then this will move into the southern Gulf where some intensification is likely at least up until Wednesday morning. And then shear begins to increase and on this forecast track. This takes it very near to uh, and just to the north of Cedar Key at this particular point near the Florida Big Bend region uh, and the Panhandle sometime Thursday into Friday. Uh, but we notice that this cone extends pretty far away here, really going from uh, really about the western part of the Florida Panhandle all the way through uh, Tampa and Orlando, even Cape Coral, Melbourne, some of those areas. Uh, so this forecast is likely to change. Now, based on this forecast, we do expect there to be a significant impact risk that is expected generally from, again, about the part of western Florida Panhandle here all the way back uh, to the south towards the Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Tampa Bay vicinity, and then encompassing that as an elevated risk. Again, A, this is going to be broad because the significant amount of uncertainty here, and there can't really be a higher risk at this point because there's so much uncertainty that it's hard to narrow down a specific location. So this is likely to change in the coming hours even as we continue to get new data. Now, if we look at the HWARF forecast here, this is going to give us an idea of exactly how strong our system is likely to get over the next few days. This is looking at the upper level wind department here. So about 200 millibars, 39,000 feet in the atmosphere. Right now, we're looking at a storm that is now in a lighter shear environment. We noticed that we had the shear over the, the storm over the past few days. This has now moved into a pocket of lighter shear and is now developing an upper level anticyclone to help ventilate the system. Ventilation is good. This will continue to increase in organization today. And you notice that on the H wharf here, uh, this deepens very significantly to about 948 millibars as it's passing the western tip of Cuba. 
Now we notice that within about a few days as this begins to emerge off the western tip of Cuba and into the Gulf, where the storm is positioned is going to matter a lot. If we look at the wind here, we notice that again, what we're seeing, we have a trough that is digging down across portions of the northeast US and this trough is actually going to be uh, creating a favorable interaction, a favorable jet interaction for the storm to strengthen. Now, if it is a little bit further east here, this is putting it in optimal position to intensify as it potentially closes in on the Florida Peninsula. However, if this is further west initially, this is good for intensification. But as we begin to run this forward here, we notice that what ends up happening uh, is we start to get an increase in the southerly jet here. And the southerly jet is basically racing towards this trough, just the natural geostrophic balance. And so what this does is it actually increases shear down here to over 40 knots in some cases. And we start to see our storm rapidly weaken as that shear begins to significantly increase. Now, the one thing to note here about the h wharf this is a hurricane-specific model, but it is actually ran off the GFS grid and off the initial boundary layer conditions. So again, the GFS and h wharf have very similar tracks because of the boundary layer conditions that both of them are sharing. So that's why these tracks here are pretty similar. There's also something else I want to point out here. These spaghetti model plots that you're seeing here, these almost all of them, almost all of them are also ran off of the GFS grid. So again, you're dealing with a, a storm that has model variability. And on this particular uh, thing here, in this particular case, these tend to favor the GFS because they are ran off the GFS grid. You notice there are some here included, like the UK MET models um, that are not uh, included in that uh, boundary layer condition and other things that you know the GFS uses. Um, so the UK MET model, for instance, is a different model and it takes it over the Florida Peninsula. Um, but there's other differences here that we're going to need to talk about besides the intensity because ultimately the intensity also predicts the track. Because if you have a storm that is much stronger in here, say in 24 to 48 hours, it tends to favor this left side here because the steering flow here in this case is actually going to favor a more kind of west-northwesterly movement um, with a stronger storm versus an east storm that's further that's weaker further east and catches that trough. So if we look here on the GFS modeling here, we notice that over the next few days, this is the zero Z run here, we have a trough that's going to be digging in here and we can see this evolution play out on the GFS. So this trough digs in and is in the Ohio Valley moving off towards the Northeast US in about 90 hours from now. Uh, we notice that, again, the evolution, though, is different. We notice that the 060 uh, European run here is a little bit different with this trough evolution. It's much slower, and with an initial storm that is a little bit further east, this trough right here is able to dig in, catch the storm, and carry it up the peninsula, whereas on the GFS, this trough moves very quickly, and then you get a building surface high that is over the southwest U.S., with the surface high promoting anticyclonic flow, generally speaking, uh, you have, again, this, um, you know, northernly flow in the, you know, upper levels here. And you're starting to get the storm feeling that and slowing down. And then that shear begins to take off and increase very significantly. So you end up dealing with a rapidly weakening storm. So these are very two different possibilities. And that is certainly a concerning thing, given that we are only about four days out from this point, about three and a half to four days out. And you would think that there'd be a little bit more consensus among the models, but that's completely the opposite case here. And if we look at the GFS ensembles, uh, this is the 0Z, uh, 06Z GFS ensemble, so 2 a.m. GFS run. Uh, we notice that again, most of the members, again, the ensemble mean and the deterministic run, run here basically just takes this up into the panhandle. And there are several members that begin to follow this here, and even some that get it towards the Mississippi, Florida, or I'm sorry, the Alabama, Florida border. Whereas others here, you notice that again, these are weaker further east uh, initially, and these turn into the Florida Panhandle or Florida Peninsula and the Big Bend region of Florida. So there is definitely that possibility. If we look at the Super Ensemble blend, this is 139 different members. Uh, from the uh, ECMWF, the GFS, and UK MET models. This is the overnight runs here, 0Z, so 8 p.m. last evening is when it was initialized. 
But we notice again, most of it is pretty much the same at this point. By about hour 72, we notice that again, we kind of have the same overall pattern where we end up dealing with a spread of, of potential locations from northeast of the Yucatan Peninsula uh, to very close to even potentially the Florida Keys and uh, South Florida at this point. And we notice that unlike yesterday's run here, we can kind of see there's definitely been an eastward shift throughout our 96 to 84. So that's 12Z yesterday, and this is 0Z, definitely seeing an easterly weighted shift that has occurred. I mean, it's very clear, and it's even clearer in recent runs as well that this tends to favor more of a potential threat for maybe Tampa Bay or portions of the Florida Big Bend region. And one of the things to note here is if we have a storm further south, like near Tampa Bay, this is going to hit as a major hurricane or close to it as shear will not have time to decrease the storm's intensity before it makes landfall. So that is something to note here. And then by day five, again, we just kind of get a wide range of possibilities, but it certainly has shifted uh, more towards the east from other runs. And even the ECMWF UK Met models agree on that. And the ensemble mean for that matter has also trended towards these groupings here. And it's not just these two models. There's other runs like the CMC, the Canadian, and the Icon forecast that have trended eastward as well. So it remains to be seen if this is a legitimate trend or just kind of a windshield wiper effect. We have the 12Z models running uh, in a little bit, and we should get more clarification then. Real quick look here at the both ensemble guidances here. Again, this is the European ensembles. Almost all of them unanimously take this over Florida. Um, at some point, again, especially the peninsula here, dealing with the potential for impacts. There are some members that still, again, get this uncomfortably close and then kind of turn it on out and back towards the west, and that does happen. Uh, but those are certainly the minority of members at this point. And there are even some members that carry this into the southwest Atlantic off the southeast coast here. Whereas on the GFS ensembles, you notice, again, there are still some members that do carry this into the... A peninsula here. There are still a few that do, but most of the GFS members are further west. So unfortunately, we are still a little while away from getting a good understanding of where this will go, but the trend today has been eastward. So it is important to remember that everybody in the Florida Peninsula, really Tampa, Cape Coral, Orlando, Jacksonville, Melbourne, um, you know, all the way through the Florida Big Bend region, through Pensacola, Tallahassee, those areas, Yes, you need to be preparing for a potential hurricane landfall somewhere within that area. Again, we're talking late next week that we could be dealing with this. So, you know, going in Wednesday morning, Thursday into Friday as the storm begins to slow down. But hopefully with all of the upper air soundings and hopefully with the NOAA uh, aircraft reconnaissance data missions from the upper level recon missions, those should begin to consolidate the models We've seen a very clear shift in the GFS here. And in fact, I believe, yeah, we do have the 12Z runs in here as well. Uh, the 12Z runs are also a little bit east and trending a little bit slower with this trough here. So we've seen a very clear trend eastward in recent runs here. And you can very clearly see there's been, this is the past four runs here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so those are the past four runs. And we've noticed a very clear easterly jog here in the forecast guidance. So this continues to be something that is now on higher alert for the Florida Big Bend region, for Tampa, Cape Coral, Fort Myers, those areas, Orlando, Melbourne, Jacksonville. This is a very real possibility. And because we're dealing with more uncertainty than usual, we're going to have to wait some time still, but it is imperative to go through your hurricane preparedness plans now and rather be safe than sorry. Now, of course, my plans is I will be chasing this storm. Don't know where yet because Unfortunately, the models have not converged on a solution, uh, but sometime next week we should be doing that. So look forward to that. And of course, I'll be making updates on this as time progresses. All right. So that being said, of course, I am Michael Romali. I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I will talk to you guys more later this afternoon.